so much light. Daylight. All the time. And on sunny days, it felt like he was sitting outside. It was just that bright. And not surprising, Grace? Well, it was a factory. I thought it was dark and dirty. Then, why the work then? I was 15, and it was time I paid my own way. Paid your own way? What about the school? No, I didn't miss it much. The girls were all so nice, and the work wasn't even that hard. It wasn't like factory work, really. It was more like art. The way we were painting those dials, we were artists. I'm not sure the one you should be talking to. Dr. Gonsoshi, he's the one you should talk to. Now, Arthur, you know he won't talk to us. It was his process. Tell me about that process, Arthur. You use a, a powder. We use a powder. There was an to an adhesive to make an antibody. That business of brushes. I did not invent that. They're doing that tonight, stop it. But we knew about it. We all knew about it, so we just hadn't realized we had. Thank you. 
Uh, I will continue my experiments to find a better method for the treatment of the cancer. That is so. It has killed all kinds of sea cancer. But some doctors dispute that. Since they do not understand the method, there is no question. Radium will kill sea cancer. Not true. Not true. Not true. How do you manage to devote yourself both to science and to your children? It's not so easy. <laughs> but my doctors and I share my gratitude for the American women and their interest in science and my work. I am most grateful. Madam Chair! Madam Chair! Madam Chair! No more questions. Madam Chair is on a tight schedule. Mrs. Andrew Carnegie has sent for a car and will escort Dr. Chair personally, as will I, to Washington, where President Carter will present the gift. One gram of radium. <laughs>
like, oh, of course he goes back as kids. So, so what am I going to develop it? Oh, yeah, sure. Mr. Ralph from the front office was there. Dr. Valsash was there, too. And Mr. Rita. And he left early, so he was there all the same. Oh, and Greg, you know that bell from the first one? What's his name? The fellow with the red hat? You know who I'm talking about, right? Ooh, the tall guy with the freckles. Yeah, the one who snaps his fingers all the time? George! Jerry. I think it was George. It's Jerry. Jerry Madeline. He's the one who was always talking with Molly in the day room. Oh, yeah. And Greg, at the end of the service, he goes over the court and he goes like this. Like this, I'll tell you. Yeah, we'll be sending some of you girls up there. 
have some girls in mind. Oh yeah, um, there were a few. Uh, there was uh, Sarah Leah, Kiatin Deutsch, there was another Kiatin. Oh yeah, Kiatin Shaw. Fine, there you have it, girls. Now, so you're all very busy, you shall have to your work. Thank you, ladies. My best wishes to you. As bad as you can get. Ah, uh, yeah, play a big picture of me and everything in the house. Once 
we have a friend zone and the one using that is here. You is big term. Right there in front of you. Wait, talk sometimes. Grace, you want to be in big place? Be in big place. I'm going to stop. You said that now, Tommy, but when we get married, you're changing it. Fine. I'll be this lady. Just to pieces. 
Nothing to tell me, you know? Nothing to tell me, 
red. It's going to be one of our best days ever. So it's possible for the success that you find so disheartening. I'll give my check. What for? Quick by half. Hardy, this man needs a job, not charity. What is it your father says? A working man needs to work. But where is Where is one who sold much work? Well, it's a match with his soul, I suppose. It's different. I'll have him talk to that. Hardy! But make no promises, Diane. No promises? Do you have?
I must say, Mrs. Fryer, your, your book looks better than mine. It, it does? Well, that's what happens to an old man who smokes. Now, not tell me what else is troubling you. My neck is sorry. My feet and my back most of had to wear a brace for a while. So I see. And this happened before you left the company or after? Uh, it happened after I left. Dr. Neff said this had nothing to do with the radio plant. Uh, one girl who used to work there actually died from it. Ah, yes, yes, terrible thing. Vincent's angina. What is that? It's an ulcer you can just snip them out. From the radio? Oh, no, 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 no. A rare and unfortunate result of poor dental care. So, let that be a lesson to you. Always wish you see. Um, there was something else in the newspaper about this, but other girls will get sick. One girl I used to work with, they sent her to the hospital. Actually, she's in the hospital in New York. Doctors don't know what to do. They never said anything. Miss Fire! Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't tell me you pay attention to the papers. Those stories are not scientific. But, uh, Reporters are not scientific, Miss Fire. They, they don't follow scientific methods. They write to sell, not to educate. The scientist is not concerned with what sells. He is concerned with the truth. He under undertakes years of painstaking study in order to arrive at understanding of understanding that most people want to presume to comprehend this fire. You would do best to listen to science and ignore the nonsense that's in the newspapers. Because I can tell you now, radio has nothing to do with what's happening. It doesn't? Not in the least. Then what's alien? Poor guy, this is fire. Poor guy. It's called the alien way to <sighs> Dr. Neff, of what you're talking about, is a dentist. Not a physician. Not a physician. What you have is a vitamin deficiency. You must eat fresh food. You must eat, you must eat some raw meat as well. That will help with anemia. Raw cow's liver in particular. Cook it if you must, but eat it fresh food if you want. Oh, no, 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 Ms. Fryer. I'm a scientist, and I take a purely scientific interest, interest in this situation. By allowing me to examine you, you help me advance in my own studies, so I thank you. Here's my card. Call me anytime. Thank you, Dr. Foreman. Happy to be of service here. Dr. Frederick Foreman, PhD Physiology, Columbia University. That's not a real doctor. My finding is Mr. Reader. Detective Evaluation I Trust. The source of my funding has no bearing on my research. I never examined her per se. It it wasn't a medical examination per se. Nevertheless, you were still able to offer her some useful advice. I did my best for her. What is better than my research? You see, half the world is to work with the working company. Where that is, he's working for the company. I can't believe somebody would do that to me. Straight out lying to me like that. Nothing surprises me anymore, Grace. Well, how are you doing on the rest of the report? The animal state that can definitely reveal no adverse effects in the radio. The problem, as you suspected, is one of personal hygiene. I'm very grateful. Though, I'm particularly grateful that you're going to examine this woman so much. Oh, no, 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 Mr. Peter. I didn't examine her. I, I merely consulted with her. All the same. She's doing much better. Isn't that so? For what I can see, Mr. Peter, she's on the road to recovery.
wide directions. You want anything? Thank you. I'm going to go to look dry. December 4th, 1927, Jack Kelly, my dear, for the new pleasure. Nancy, do you have a look at the graphic? 
on the strange case of the Radium Girls. Who claimed that there were boys enough to hang out their employer? And now see if they're paying court. $250,000. That's the price that one of suffering. Doctors say the girls only have a year to live. Only one year to live and 250 grand spent. What would you do with that kind of money? What would you do with that kind of money? To ease your last suffering days on earth. What would you do with $250,000? I'd buy a wardrobe like that being passes. I'd give it all to charity. Then I'd travel around the world, first class, and call my friends. I'd play the stock market. Mortgage my father to build on our home and pay my last operation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Suffering worriedly through this entire ordeal. Struggling valiantly to keep up our flat and spirits. For the sake of our family and friends. It hurts to smile, but I have to. I don't smile like I'm crazy. <laughs> well, sad story in the Boston Globe, and I'm so sorry for your plight. It seems in this time of rapid advancement, the well-being of the average worker is overlooked. 
I would like to share with you girls the secret to my own good health at the good age of 92. It's called Christian Science. Right. I read a global situation in the Islamic constitution and I'm very far from your solution. Benzene. Benzene is a tonic and all natural ingredient. Benzene will help restore your health and vitality. We prepared proper your life and supply of Benzene in exchange for the use to your exclusive picture in our advertisements. Dear girl, I read about doing the Billings Gazette. I run a hundred red cotton up here and do very well by myself. I've always longed for a companion, and I'm really quick to offer you a comfortable home in your final hours. A girl like you is up so much. Don't you think you deserve a few fleeting hours of happiness? Sincerely, your admirer, Leonard S. Wallace. P.S. In close is my picture. Catherine, this guy actually sent this picture. <laughs> <coughs> you all right? I'm bleeding again. Oh, shall I get the nurse? No, I did this before. It'll stop eventually. Um, maybe I should go. No, don't go. It won't be useful. Oh, well, he needs the rest. <sighs> he can rest. I never rest. Not well, anymore. Well, you'll sleep tomorrow. Yeah, I may not wake up. Of course you'll wake up. Not if it don't go so well. My mother's cousin went in for her appendix surgery, and she didn't come home. Oh, well, you just can't think that way, Catherine. Look at this. Miss Wally said folks would be on Ross's side, and she sure was right. Here's one from California. What if we don't win? Of course we'll win, Catherine. But what if we don't? My father will lose his house and we'll be on the street and you'll be on the street too and you and Tommy won't ever get that wedding of yours. Catherine. Speaking of Tommy, how come I don't ever hear him complaining about it? Isn't it funny? Uh, Catherine, as soon as the judge hears our testimony, they'll rule for us and the case will be over in a day. You really think so? Sure, when they see what kind of shape we're in, we'd be awfully hard to ignore. That'd be something, won't it? When we get to the stand and see that look on Mr. Reader's face. <laughs> <laughs> now, you want to read more letters? Yeah. Where's this from? From well, some cowboy. <laughs> he sent his picture. That ain't I have no vanilla, so I got some chocolate for you. Well, it took you long enough. Don't uh -huh. get on me. I had six people go stop me on the way over there. All of them reporters and all of them asking after you two. Uh, yeah, waiting for me to die. No one's waiting for you to die. It's true. One of them called my mother and asked if I was dead yet. When she said no, he sounded disappointed. It'll look it'll make you feel better. Um, How about picture? The love of life. What the hell are you doing? We need a donation for the graduate exclusive. Exclusive? What are you talking about? Five thousand dollars. That's
Gentlemen, I drew a number of the girls who claimed they got sick here. One of them, the girl Shaw had once so that they are removed it just by lifting the boat out of her mouth. As you can see. Uh, that's all right, Dr. Nephew. Put that away. Well, then perhaps you ought to look down the x-rays. This was an expensive case to treat, and I never did get no compensation. The girl died, and apparently never paid. I sympathize, Dr. Neff, but what does that to do with any of us? Well, here it is, Shrey. There's going to be a lot more girls coming out and saying they got sick here. So, maybe we can do business. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. That sort of thing. I'm not following you. Suppose you were to give me a list of all the girls that worked here. I'd see to it that there was no more losses. You think you could cure them? Cure them? No, 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 no. I'm simply saying I scratch your back, you scratch mine. How so, Doctor? I'd examine them for radio necrosis and then come up with a more favorable diagnosis. High or essay or something else like that. Most of the girls will die of natural causes anyways. And the rest we can put off until the statute of limitations kicks in and it's truly to suit. So you're persuaded they haven't got a case against my company? Exactly. And if it did come into court, I can testify that was some other problem. And it'd be a strong testimony coming from the dentist who treat them. What makes you so certain that these girls will come to you? They'll come quickly if I can charge them. Because we could hang you. Exactly. We understand each other, Mr. Reader. What exactly are you asking, Dr. Matt? I need $10,000 for my trouble so far. And for every bride, we need to see our help. Two dollars for this visit, plus expenses for the extras. I'm suggesting a gentleman's agreement here. Better off if it's not a right. No. Alright, we'll put in writing. No, the proposal is immoral. We'll have nothing to do with it. Moral? You're finally going to be talking about morals, Mr. Reader. Mr. Lee? We have your own high guns ready to testify. Those are expert witnesses. Expert witnesses? Hey, black is more like it. No one's got the dirt I got. If you're smart, Mr. Reader, you'll play ball with me. Believe me, there's plenty of other folks interested in this information. You're threatening me. Threatening? No. Just a business proposition. Looking out for my interest. Same way you're looking out for yours. Mr. Lisey dropped an end to the door. All right! You want to play ball? That's enough! Right. But believe me, when this all shits out, will be me and you short another step! Gentlemen, I want you all to make statements. We'll look out here this morning. We're going to send them to the West End of Society and let Dr. Neff can see who is playing ball and who isn't. An excellent idea. I don't know. Perhaps we shouldn't be so quick to dismiss the next proposal. What do you mean? We're in a very bad situation here, Mr. Ian. That's true. Mr. Lee says you've had the trouble getting your own work here. We have lost the contract. That's going to get lost. The papers have told a story about those girls. Maybe they have to be saints. And what defense can you put out? Some say we'll try to get some work. And in court of public opinion, we've already lost. Perhaps we should reconsider. The Senator of the Paris had tested him to his name between two years. That could be very helpful to us. We should retain him. Retain him as what? An extortionist? As an expert, by Dr. Flynn. Dr. Flynn was a highly respected professor at Columbia University. Dr. Neff is a name of the dentist. But Dr. Flynn treated some of those girls, didn't he? He didn't treat them, he consulted with them. He dispensed medical advice on them. It wasn't medical advice, it was an expert's opinion, a scientific opinion. Thank you. 
And reader, how can you do this kind of game with those poor girls sitting right there? Maybe this will help to explain I have received a letter. You know, you think the company would be eager to, you know, take care of this situation. But Mark really seems to enjoy a very spore of what he can get away with. Although the company has its own publicity. Oh, it's very cool. Maybe this will help to explain? What is this? It's from Catherine Drinker, Mrs. Cecil Drinker of Harvard. She's an industrial hygienist also. She worked with Dr. Drinker and studied the rainbow plant. It was a joint effort, actually. That's very interesting, Miss Wiley, but we've already seen this report. There's nothing in it to help us. We've only seen part of it, Mr. Berry. Please, this is the complete report. I received it this morning. Mrs. Drinker has been following our story very closely in the papers, and she was particularly disturbed to read that last article in the ledger, the one where Mr. Lee says her study clears the company. He doctored the report. We have doctored the report. Apparently, he pulled one page listing the blood conditions of about a dozen employees and passed it off as a whole thing. It doesn't look so bad by itself, does it? But in context, it's a somewhat different picture. We can't use this. Yes, that should impress the judge. The judge? Miss Wiley, I'm not going to make wait three months to make use of this. I want you to call the contact out in the New York court. If you don't want to let us present the evidence at the courtroom, well, maybe you can read about it in the next court. January 12th, 1928. Jack Gilbert, here reports in the news with Mr. Jim Hall, look at the graph. Bring girls to the court today. Bring in girls, knock at the doors of justice. Will they be heard? These four girls face pain. This figure is ruined. And death as the toxic slowly crushes moments. The hearing begins here at Chancellor Court. While Vernon and Mary makes a shocking announcement. Showing that company is lying. Concealing the ill effects of the product. Showing them distorted the results of a Harvard study. Read it in the graphic. We care because you care. Is it that bad? You didn't read it? Oh, I make a point not to these days. If only other people would. Mrs. Mitchell, from across the street, she walked right past me this morning. Didn't even say a word to me. I know she saw me. And the one at the market, and the green grocer, and Mrs. Middleton, the one at the club, the whispers. Why don't you put that away, darling? Read the journal, right? I'm sure I saw Frank at some point. And the club today? Someone actually had the nerve to ask me, is it true? Did your husband really poison those women? I said, Mrs. Cowles, if you thought the rumors were true, why would you even speak to me? I certainly wouldn't associate with a woman whose husband did such things. Why do you go there then? That's how women are. Because I've been a member for years. What do you want me to say, Diane? That we knew we were poisoning people, but we couldn't stop because we were making too much money. Is that what you want me to say? I certainly wouldn't want you to say such a thing. Even if it was true? Or especially if it was true? Is it true? Is that what you want me to think? What would you like me to think? For God's sake, man, can't you see? It's Von Soshi. He's jealous of our success. He's feeding information to consumers so they can railroad us. Why would the consumers say? Why should radical women do but it's half them rent or they socialists? Same thing with that club you belong to. What? The stock told that idiot Mrs. Milton. You cheat us about anything. And you women think you can go around and fix the world's problems. I can't. I'm sorry. The husbands are us making a living. You need to quit that club. Quit the club? Like I said, stop talking to the idiot. Please, say you cannot think I'm in black, Diane. You cannot really think I would go out and poison you. 
Thirteen girls have died. People die every day. Newspaper notices. Children, young, old, infants, young than carriers die every day. But they work for you. They also work for other places, Diane. I have a report from a professor at Columbia University, same like Dr. Drinker, who says that there is no connection between our plants and these illnesses. Would you like to see your report? So, so what would the cause be? I don't know, Diane. I really don't know. Everyone's done their best to find out, but I don't know. Do you remember what you said to me? The day I told my father I wasn't going into the ministry. Can you do as much good in the morning as you can in the church? Do you remember? I can't forget. I was such a scared kid, but he was such an icon. I don't think I could have stood up to him if he wanted to. Sure you would have, I mean. I know you that. You save lives, Diane. You make lives better. You save lives. Everything I do, everything I've always done, always, it's always been for you. You know that, right? I know. Is that another reporter? But, uh, don't answer it. Arthur! Is that Mr. Lee? Charlie, for God's sakes! I got the phone from the level. This room's waiting until morning. I'm sorry. Good evening. Mr. Lee. It's Dr. Lee. Dan? He's dead already. What? He died this morning. Charlie, that's not possible. I just saw him last night. He was just here a month ago for the car accident. He was just here. My old friend did not talk to him. He says it was a severe injury. That blame you for him? Someone who the legend told me that. They need an article by tomorrow, by 8 in the morning, so if you want to read it once, that's what they When are the services? Sorry? The services. I don't know. Send it to my house. Diane? Uh, I'll call Louise. Yes, that's, that's right. Call Louise. Oh, poor, poor Louise. Arthur, we should, we should go see her. We should go see her right now. I wouldn't do that. Why ever not? Let us assume. Someone told me she's planning a wrongful death action. Um, I've already written something up. Coming to Kansas for eight years, always in poor health, recently in decline. But Dan was never sickly. He was always on the golf course or sailing or tending to his garden. Lori, he kept such a beautiful garden. We'll take care of this in the morning, John. <laughs> Sorry to break that news. Good night, Mr. Reader. Good night, Mr. Reader. Charlotte can be a bit excessive at times. I have to say something to share that is what expected. You need to explain it. Sometimes it's necessary to hand that to me. No. We're going to get rid of this now. Let's have a case under the sink. And we'll get rid of that too. We'll have no more of it in this house. I'll do it. Diane? I mean too far for it. I really didn't expect you to. February 21st, 1928, to Mr. Raymond Berry from Harrison Martin, medical examiner at SX County. We have examined the remains of the deceased Amalia Mondo. Our study reveals the following. Radioactive substances have been found in large quantities in the lower jaw, upper jaw, and lumbar vertebrae. No evidence of syphilis was found. Buddy, it's radioactive. Don't you get it? Don't take our cameras. Captain Wyman continuously declares no other than showing companies lie. Dr. Joseph, the newer dentist who treated them all, has turned over portions of the jaw bone to remove them. These x-ray films show the bone is still radioactive five years after the girl died. Well, there's a major case. Well, this works with some of them. Make our case. But, you know, this gentleman will make our case. Last night in the graphic exclusive, the founder of the U.S. Radio Corporation was his long silence with this shocking announcement. Radium is 
one of the most dangerous substances known to man. Dr. Fonsalchi, is it true you assisted with the autopsy? Yeah, and given my expertise in radium exposure, Dr. Martin and I were able to determine this. Ms. Maggio absorbed enough radium to kill 10 people. Doctor, what does it say about mild radium therapy? Are we not advising against it? Radium is responsible for the deaths of these poor girls. It should be considered a most dangerous substance. Then, do you agree with the doctor's prognosis that the radium girls only have a few months to live? From what I've seen, uh, it'll be lucky to last that long. I'll tell you what we should have done. We should have taken that and her up on the rocket when we had the chance. That's what we should have done. Five thousand dollars? You should have talked to her too, because I'll tell you what, pay a pay. And I'll tell you what else we should have done. Stop telling me what we should have done. There are lots of things that we should have done, and it'll be no good to think about them now. Alright, keep your shirt on. What do you think? The red or the blue? So it's very safe. You're going to go back to the company? Uh, you know, I like the red, but it just don't fit so good. <laughs> Is he gonna talk the company up a bit? Miss Wyler says one more interview, you should get the job done. So I says, just on and on, you know? It's worth it, you know. But if they came up to 5,000, would you take a 10? Let them come up and not hate me. Grace, it's called a settlement. It's just another way for them to hide. So let them run. And they win. So they win, they got win anyway. I can't have much confidence in you. Grace, for Christ's sake, you have one lawyer working up for nothing, up against six lawyers who'll get in a bunch of You know what I found out today? They put lead screens in the laboratory for the technicians. Do they have like a bus lead screens? Jesus. I don't want a hundred girls in a room and they're just gonna spend that kind of money on us. Grace, what are we doing? And Miss Miley says they're gonna close down here. Grace. And they want to keep it all quiet. They will be lost away, but do Grace! Grace! What are we doing here? I thought the idea was to get somebody to study it that's get a better doctor and get on the face. Get on the face. Look, he's still wearing my ring. Look, Grace, listen. There's a house up for sale in the road estate. Two rooms up, two rooms down. It's not that bad, but it's a star. Plus, it's only three blocks away from the school. What do we need for the school? If I had to one. Tommy. What did you think was going to happen after everything? Did you think everything was just going to go back to the way that it was? Yeah, why well, wouldn't it? I have six surgeons. Okay. He's got some fluid in his bedroom. All right. And he says there'll be more. So we deal with it when it comes. And more and still more. Why can't you see that? How can you talk about getting married and buying houses when you know there's nothing? Grace, I can't think about any of that. For now, I just want for us to be together. I want to come to my house, to my wife, to you. I, look, I'm too old to be living this in-between life. But I promise, Grace, once all this is over, I'll do my best to take care of you. No. Grace, come on. I, sh I should have gave this to you a long time ago. Grace, I don't want this. Tommy, please, are you gonna make me say Look, you're not getting enough sleep, okay? Get some rest. Tommy! Get some rest. Tommy! Don't do this to me, Tommy! Tommy! Arthur? Ah, Charlie. Aren't you back home? Charlie, I've been cleaning the chair, buddy. I think we should settle these girls. Come up with a figure that makes sense. No. Also, we agree. We need to defend the victory. Otherwise, we should more of the same nonsense. Charlie, well, things have changed. Look, Arthur, I know you're damn close, but you can't let them come here. Von Sochi is going to testify. We can do it. How? A little money in Now you want to bribe him? Not a bribe. We'll call it consideration. Consideration. For an expert witness. But a very good you don't understand the things, do you, Charlie? Right now? Out of the luxury of thinking of it. Let me tell you something, Charlie. A guilty man has tremendously to unburden himself. His guilt can eat him alive. That is why 
Dr. Vonsovsky is testifying for girls. He wants to be free. And that is why he'll never testify for us, no matter how much consideration you offer. So with these girls, go so with all the others. Never dread like that. This is only the beginning. Tell Mark to get in touch with Eric. It's a conversation going to come up with a figure that they like. For God's sake, Arthur, what are you trying for? Are you trying to wipe me out? I've got to get this off. Everybody, everybody I've been buying the last seven years, I have stopped into this company. Why? Because of you. You said it was a sure thing. No myth. Why work for us off so we can work for ourselves? Remember that one? Take a chance, Charlie. Take a chance. Charlie, you were fool. Von Sashi fools all the best we can do to try to clean up as best as we can. Do this? This is the end of it. Seven down, Charlie? Not me. Well. Don't you know? They're one vote for you. And whose vote is that, Charlie? Arthur. Have you so little faith in me? You don't have enough votes to get me off the board, I'll still be on the board. And so I'll look at this company goes on. Think of that for next time. There's nothing to 
start with. Why get supporting home? I have to I have to deal with it. Why can't he? Can you see that you just can face the thought of me not being with us? So what? I have to deal with it at the end of the day. Do something with the air brace. Two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. What are you gonna do with two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, Miss Fur? Well, I wouldn't know. There's no point to it. Ma, you didn't say we had any mail. New Mexico, huh? They just keep on writing. She was here. Miss Wiley was here. I quit school because you said I should. I quit that 
stupid brush in my mouth because Miss McNeil said I should. I never said, please get into the school. I never said, I didn't like the taste of this paint. I never argued, and I never once questioned. At night, I'd come home and see my dress on the back of my closet door, shoes everywhere, hairbrush and comb on the dresser. There was so much light on so much light. Even though I knew, I knew something wasn't right. I never asked questions, and I never argued. And don't you see? They knew I wouldn't, and that's what they were counting on.
you authorize the uh, you authorize the fund X and well should have read it. It's your content. Mr. Lee was in charge of our promotion of content at the time. I entrusted those activities to him. Now, Mr. Reader, you testified that you started working at the U.S. Radio Corporation in 1918. Is that correct? Yes, as campus manager. And you held that position for how long? Four years. Four years. During those four years, how often did you venture into the studio? Every day. Every day. So, you must have observed the girls put the brushes on their lips. I don't recall that. You're saying you went, to, you went into a studio every day for four years, and you never saw a single girl put the brush on her mouth. I said I don't recall it. You don't recall it. What do you recall, Mr. Reader? You're not putting a man to have such a faulty memory. Objection. I withdraw. No more questions. Your witness, Mr. Markley? We have no questions for this witness, Your Honor. All right, gentlemen, please approach. I am ready to issue my ruling. Wait, uh, Your Honor, I'm going to get to present our <laughs> I realize that, Mr. Markley, but this proceeding is to determine standing. Now, I've heard enough of these two days to determine that. The radium in the bones of these girls is an ongoing source of poison in their systems. Nothing your witnesses can say will change that. Now, will it? Your Honor, our witnesses are prepared to testify that the company could not have known about the name. Mr. Markley, in the interest of justice, I am asking for the defense rights without calling any witnesses. We can conclude this hearing today and schedule the case for trial. All right, Your Honor. Fine. I hereby rule that the suit of limitations has not been exhausted and these girls still have standing to sue. Your Honor, one thing. I have a very full schedule ahead of me with two other cases pending. And a key witness promise will not be available until the end of the summer. I'm afraid we won't be able to testify until September. Your Honor! I'm sorry, Your Honor, but our chief expert witness is associated with an institution of higher learning. This is the busiest time of year for him, and I cannot expect him to appear. Well, Mr. Murphy is responsible for that situation. No, he is the uh, one demanding the details of the We have just agreed to waive our right to present witnesses at this trial. Surely you won't let us make our defense without the presence of our key witness? All right, Mr. Markley, trial is set for September. This hearing is adjourned. Thank you, sir. I can't tell you that. He's not here. Yeah. He's known about this court for months. Why would you? No. Very clever, Edward. How long do you plan to keep this up? As long as necessary. Mr. Markley. Oh, Mr. Barry. Congratulations, I didn't believe the court of Baltimore. You know full well these girls can't wait until September. One is so ill she can't appear in court. My client has a right to make his defense. Well, we will not wait until September, I assure you that. One way or another, we'll find an empty room on my own, and your expert witness will be there. That girl is still staring at my foot. I wouldn't worry about it. She thinks this is personal. I somehow found this. How do I make her understand? I didn't want this. You don't. You don't make her understand. You don't want her. But she looks like death. That's what. They all look like death. Grace, that man is well. He won't look at me. He won't ever look at me. He just looks at me as if I'm not even him. It doesn't matter, Grace. He hurt you.
Where does the company go from here? The Young Grading Corporation looks forward to serving its customer fans community and is proud to involve this legal lady to do a close. And that's CB Lee, president. Catherine Wiley of the New Jersey Consumers League, our press statement. Were you pleased with the results, Ms. Wiley? Finally, these poor girls receive some compensation for their suffering. But more importantly, issue of radiant poisoning has been brought to public awareness. Thank you, Ms. Wiley. The spelling, by the way, is Wiley with one L and Catherine with a K. How could it have happened? 
I remember so clearly walking up those stairs to the studio that was wide high windows with the light at the floor, with the floor feet on my feet. And all the smell of the place choppy like an old school room. And all those girls, school girls there, all bent to the task in a plain green smock suit. No man could walk as fast as those girls did. The hands so delicate, coming from the brushes and the paint to the dials to their lips. Try as I might, dear. Try as I might. I cannot recall my face. I never saw 